High-dose chemotherapy followed by an autologous stem cell transplant using your own stem cells is an important treatment option for younger and or fitter myeloma patients. Although high-dose chemotherapy is very effective in destroying myeloma cells, it also destroys the normal healthy stem cells in your bone marrow. A stem cell transplant is therefore necessary to rescue and restore the bone marrow. The process involves a number of different stages and begins with induction treatment that lasts on average between four to six months. The next stage involves the collection of your stem cells. Stem cells are collected from blood, but to be able to collect enough for a transplant, you will be given treatment to mobilize the stem cells from your bone marrow into your blood. This consists of injections of the growth factor GCSF and sometimes also an injection of cyclophosphamide. These drugs increase the number of stem cells in your bone marrow, causing them to spill over into the blood where they can be collected easily. If you are having difficulty mobilizing stem cells, you may be given another drug called plerixophore. Stem cells are collected or harvested by a process called apheresis, in which blood is taken from one arm and passed through a cell sorting machine. This separates out the stem cells, and the remaining blood is returned into a vein in your other arm. The harvested stem cells are mixed with a preservative and then frozen in liquid nitrogen until the time of your transplant. The next stage involves treatment with high-dose chemotherapy. This is usually a high dose of melphalan given intravenously, with the aim of removing any residual myeloma cells you have following induction treatment. However, as mentioned before, the melphalan can also destroy normal healthy cells. Your previously collected stem cells are reinfused back into your blood, where they make their way back into the bone marrow. The transplanted stem cells then begin to make new blood cells. This vital process, which effectively rescues your bone marrow, is known as engraftment. The first sign of engraftment is a rise in your white blood count. This normally happens two to three weeks after the transplant. Until the new cells engraft, you are at high risk of infection because you have fewer white blood cells. It is important that steps are taken to protect you from infection and to treat you as soon as possible if you develop one.